My wife and I were such pretty children, quiet children too. You'd hardly know we were there. You'd figure that we would produce pretty children and well-behaved. You could imagine people saying, that's not a marriage, that's an experiment in eugenics. But as it turned out, our babes in arms have always belonged to others. That look in our eyes, please don't let me drop this baby. We did not exactly try to have a baby of our own. We did not exactly try not to, not always to be honest. And I went on to school, and she went back to school, and I changed careers, and she changed careers. There are choices that if you hesitate to make, nature makes for you. Suffice it to say, no babies. But nature also abhors a vacuum. From the first into that vacuum, that crease, that window of opportunity, came cats. Zempawala and Talsawala, Malcolm, George Eliot, Daisy, Medora, Beanscorn, and Bodo Jr. We finally managed to chase down Bodo Sr., who had spent so many years spreading his seed across the neighborhood, and we made him our own. Those were all North Carolina cats, superior little beasts. We came to California where, like the original pioneers, our three grand old cats, George Eliot, Medora, and Big Bodo, died, rich in years. Then came the California cats, Popcorn, Boris and Oliver, Portia and Patio. As a white cat, Popcorn was not a sun cat. I think it was in 1994 we took her to the vet school at Davis where they amputated her ears. Skin cancer. She lasted until she was almost 20, buried with a tear, remembered with a smile. It seems that you have just enough invested in cats. You grieve for them when they are gone, but it is a bearable grief. What would it be like to lose a child? We have godsons now. We are pleased that they have reached the age at which we are no longer concerned about dropping them on their heads. But that does not mean they have learned to land on their feet. Who shall teach them that? Ours to love, ours to teach perhaps, but not ours.